what's up everyone? This is Brian here with Texas Gun Experience and I have two really cool pistols to show to you. Now we've already done overview videos of these, took them down to the range, burned it down and did a full kind of features and benefits of uh, both of these pistols. But if you're in the market for a 7.62x39, uh, I really think that these are the two top contenders as far as a kind of a non-AK um, premium you know, pistol or rifle setup. Uh, and the two I have in front of me is the CZ Bren 2 and the IWI Galil Ace Gen 2. So these are actually both the second generations of uh, their platforms. Um, but we're not really gonna go too deep into uh, each one. Uh, we will link the videos to uh, the kind of the overviews of each one. But I thought that these were so competing in that same kind of marketplace. So as a customer, if you're looking for you know a non-AK in 7.62 by 39 and something that's of a premium quality, I can't think of two better options that you know would really serve that interest. So we're kind of kind of compare these two, uh, maybe help you decide and kind of show you some of the differences uh, downrange. But uh, starting here on your right is the CZ Bren 2. Now this is 7.62 by 39. It is a nine inch barrel uh, where the IWI is an 8.3 inch barrel. Now they're both piston guns, but this is a short stroke and this is a long stroke. And really all that means is the operating rod in there and how far they move. Uh, now with a, uh, like a lot of piston guns, this does have a you know, charging handle that off to the side. Uh, as well as the Galil Ace here on the left-hand side, unlike AKs on the right-hand side. But there's another big difference there. The Bren does not reciprocate. It actually stays on this, uh, just stays in that forward position uh, where the Galil, like AKs, actually goes back and forth as you're shooting. The other thing is this is ambidextrous and swappable, so you can pop the charging handle on the Bren to the other side. The Galil, it is on the left-hand side, so you better like it. Now, as far as um, kind of size and modularity, they're both pretty close in size. I don't think it really matters to go over inches and centimeters here, but both guns have full length Picatinny rails. So that's nice if you're running, you know, obviously if you're gonna run irons, if you're gonna run tape switches for lights, uh, optics, uh, you know, if you wanted to run a low power variable optic, there's plenty of room on here. Uh, the only real difference with that is the Galil does have a top cover here that does get removed for disassembly. We haven't noticed any type of point of impact or uh, zeroing change with that. It does have a very secure lockup on it and it doesn't hinge, but there is kind of a, uh, like a little lock-in nub there uh, to keep, keep it from moving in, uh, around. So uh, both give you a lot of options for optic mounts up top. There will be a little difference as far as what optics you may choose. This is gonna be a little bit more standard AR height, where this is more traditional AK, where it's a little bit lower uh, if you wanna get that good uh, cheek weld. Another big difference between these two and where the Galil kinda of edges out is the magazines. So the Galil will take most AK magazines. Not all, like, you know, most AKs don't take everything, but these do take a wide arrangement of AK mags, which you could find everywhere. The Bren, unfortunately, this is a proprietary magazine. The mags are phenomenal. They're really well built. They're affordable, uh, mid thirties, but they are proprietary to this firearm. Um, so that is the only option you have. So the Galil kind of edges out there a little bit. As far as disassembly and kind of uh, maintenance, uh, both guns are gonna run pretty much forever. Uh, they're really simple, not a whole lot of moving parts. And you know, as simple as we think AK and AK variants are, um, the Bren actually has less moving parts on it, but uh, both guns are machined so well, the tolerances are very tight, and they feel like they are pretty close to like precision built weapons. They feel really smooth. The actions are, you know, hot knife through butter, really nice. So both of them really kick butt there. Uh, take down and disassembly on both of these. Don't need tools. You could do it in, you know, in the middle of the field somewhere. Uh, so both of those are really good for that. Um, the gas systems on these are very similar. Uh, again, long stroke piston, short stroke. The Bren does have some adjustability though. They have two settings, three if you count off, but they do have a kind of a standard shooting setting and adverse shooting setting. So adverse is if the gun's kind of mucked up, if it's running slow, you turn it to adverse and it throws a lot more extra gas down there to cycle it through. 
the glial, that's just gonna give you all the gas in no matter what. So it's gonna run uh, whether you like it or not. So you definitely do get more gas out of this gun, uh, which is fine. Uh, running suppressors is a little different story. So you'll see in the footage here, we actually run suppressors on both of these guns uh, and they both accept it just fine. There are things aftermarket you could do to both of these. HB Industries actually makes, uh, they have a service to where they can drill a suppressor port. k &S Precision makes a piston tip that is adjustable so you can actually change the gas settings on the glial as well. But uh, those are aftermarket options, they don't come with that. So no gas adjustment. Uh, normal and adverse conditions or off for the Bren. Uh, not really standard features, but something that's kind of cool to show on, on video here. And maybe we can do another video down the road, a little bit more elaborate on it, but uh, muzzle devices. So from the factory, this they both come with kind of flash hiders. So this comes with a standard A2 bird cage that you see on most AR platform rifles. This kind of has their own like proprietary, it's a three prong and it, it's a twist. So it's pretty cool looking. It is effective as a flash hider, but we wanna run suppressors on these. So uh, both of these have dead air chemo mounts on it. And uh, intentionally, this has a flash hider on it and this has a brake to show you the difference. Uh, brakes really help mitigate recoil. The downside is there's a lot of concussive force that goes off both sides. Also those fireballs. The three prong flash hider does a good job at dissipating that energy to kind of keep your signature low. You'll see in the video too, we threw a blast can over both of them. Didn't help either. On this, it actually was way worse than just running an open prong. It threw all that flame out the front. It's cool to look at, not unless someone else is shooting at you. Uh, and then this, it kind of helped direct that a little forward. You do lose some of that brake effectiveness because the gases aren't flowing the same way. And then of course the suppressor works pretty well. And uh, these are already pretty soft shooting guns, but a suppressor really makes them soft shooting. Uh, both guns are fairly light. The Bren does uh, kind of lead the pack as far as that goes. It is a very lightweight gun. Most of it's aluminum. It does have this kind of carbon fiber polymer uh, lower half on it. So very lightweight gun. The Galil is more true to form of the AK. You know, it does have an aluminum handguard up front, but uh, mostly, uh, you know, steel uh, receiver, uh, big bolt in it. So there's a little bit more weight with this, but that's okay. I mean, drop it out of your truck do whatever, uh, use it as a uh, baseball bat. It's, it's gonna work fine for you. So the next real thing is uh, triggers. Uh, both have good triggers out of the box. Uh, there are upgrades for both of them too on the aftermarket side of things. So this one during the review uh, has a stock trigger. It's good. It's better than most stock triggers out there. It's fairly light. There is quite a bit of take up, but the break on it and reset on it is very positive. CZ did some weird black magic because it feels like a, almost like a competition trigger from the box. Um, now I did put a HB Industries uh, trigger shoe on here. All that really did is take up some of that take up. Did not change the brake, did not change the weight, anything like that. So uh, CZ did a really good job on that trigger. Uh, it's in that two and a half pound range, uh, which is really phenomenal on the border of being too light for those, but uh, I mean, it is it is a sweet trigger, so really easy to do follow-up shots to shoot fast with. Uh, both guns have great recoil control. Even though it's a short barrel uh, on both of these, you know, there is uh, two, uh, you know, internal buffer springs on here that soak up that energy pretty well, so it doesn't beat you up too much, which is really nice, because uh, you're throwing a lot of energy down range uh, out of a short barrel, uh, so it's good to be able to soak that up to have effective rounds on target. As far as uh, braces or stocks go, plenty of aftermarket options. Both of these have two different versions. Uh, there's a lot of folding options out there as well. So, you know, this uh, does have a uh, 1913 adapter. They make 1913 adapters for the Bren as well. So there is a plethora of brace options out there or stocks if you want to SBR these uh, out there. Uh, all in all, both are phenomenal guns. They do kind of the same thing, but different. So this is a little bit more uh, in line with, you know, the FN scars out there. So definitely more, you know, modern tech, uh, kind of high speed. Everything on this is fully ambidextrous. Um, so if you're looking to go that route, this is a great choice. They are chambered in 7.62 by 39 or 5.56. So that's really cool. The Galil Ace is a little bit more kind of sticks to its roots. It is a tank, it is well built, it is reliable, and it is very accurate. So it's kind of a, 
above and beyond Accurized AK, you know, that's precision built. So uh, it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles or ambidextrous controls. Uh, it does have an ambidextrous safety. Charging handle stuck on the left-hand side. Magazine release being the uh, rock and lock is kind of ambidextrous, but a uh, little bit more weight, a little bit uh, more heft to this gun. But I mean, truthfully, you can drag this thing behind your truck uh, on the way to the range, untie it and, and <laughs> have effective range, uh, rounds down range. So really good option if you are looking for a kind of battle tested, you know, uh, tried and true design uh, in those IWI Galils. So there really isn't no wrong option here. Let us know though, what you think in the comments. Do you like one? Do you hate one? Do you have both? Uh, they're both, you know, in that kind of high, you know, 15, 18 hundred dollar price point. So they do kind of pull a premium. Uh, but it is well-deserved. These are, are really nice. So again, let us know what you think. Uh, if you'd like to see anything different, you know, done with these, uh, you know, or, you know, if you've done something to your Galil or Bren that uh, you want to share with us. If you'd like to see more gun reviews and more content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because we are dropping content every week. Gun reviews, uh, machine gun shoots, events, all types of things. We actually have a machine gun here uh, of the Bren 2 in 556 if you want to come rent that. Uh, I don't have a Galil uh, machine gun, but I do have some AKs too. So, you know, maybe uh, come check it out and give a little comparison of your own. But thanks for following along with us. We hope to see you again. We'll see you on the range.